Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Holiday Doc and thanks for tuning in. Today we've got a highly requested video for you and that is talking about the new YouTube Live experience and how to set up the perfect stream using Wirecast or XSplit. So what is step one of streaming with YouTube Live? First, and probably not so obvious, is you have to be partnered with Machinima. Machinima has exclusively brought you this content and the ability to live stream to your viewers. So if you haven't already applied at Machinima, you can go ahead and do that and they'll be able to set you up based on your, you know, your channel's performance and everything. But if you're like myself and you're already an existing user, let's go ahead and get started with this. Your top right hand channel tab is going to have your video manager. From here, if you already haven't figured it out, you're going to have a new tab available. It's going to be live events. You can go ahead and click on that, and we're going to add a new live event for demonstrational purposes. Uh, make sure you actually read through that uh, description and uh, end user agreement because there's a lot of information in there that you might not know off the start. This isn't like Twitch. You know, you're not going to get away with streaming copyrighted material, copyrighted music. It's a big no-no. Don't do it. Read the description and read that, that agreement box. So from here, pretty basic, pretty obvious. Your title, your description, your tags, everything, it needs to be set up just like you would do a video. So if you haven't uploaded a video, well, you're lost. Can't help you. No. So here you're going to add your start time, your end times, your end dates, and everything just has to be filled out correctly and it's gonna you need at least 20 minutes before you're set to live stream to be able to set this up correctly and make sure you set your right time zone and list only with live you're gonna want to check this now here's the big part where a lot of people are kind of confused on how to get this done and how to make it work well 720p 480 360 and 240 is what YouTube live is offering so far you know they have more options coming out and they're continuously providing new updates and trying to help out us YouTube live guys and they're this is the company you want to be with obviously they're a multi-billion dollar corporation they're gonna have their live stream stuff set up to be way better than any other company out there very shortly and what they've added so far that I like is this option to offer different stream settings 720 480 360 240 now what differs from this from other stream sites is when you uh, select one of these boxes it's an individual stream. So it's not you're sending out one signal and that signal is from the, their source getting chopped into four or five different options. How you send it out is how it's received. So you get a much clearer and a much better picture in my opinion and it just looks a lot more crisp. You also require a lot less bandwidth. So you're not splitting the stream up so you're only sending as much bandwidth as that particular stream needs. But this is also where it gets a little bit confusing. If you're going to do 240, 360, 480, 720 all at once, you're going to need to set up four streams and you're going to have to allocate the enough bandwidth to each one of those to make it work. Uh, one of the issues is with that is you eventually you need a lot more bandwidth than you would with other stream sites because you're offering out a lot more options. So when I stream in particular, I like to offer a 360 and a 720 HD stream. You want to have one low setting and one high setting. Not everybody has the fastest internet in the world and you want to appease as many viewers as possible to get those higher numbers on your stream. Offering a 360 allows the lesser speed internet viewers to be able to go through the stream, maybe not at the highest quality, but they're not getting the buffering, the lag that's associated with higher bandwidth streams. 720, obviously for the viewers that want to get the, the best videos out there. So once you do this, um, I don't know if I can legally or without getting into trouble go into the monetization and stuff like that. I think it breaches um, some stuff, so I'm, I unfortunately I won't be able to go into that. Uh, maybe I'll release another video directly for Machinima users altogether, and maybe I can get around that. But um, for the now, I'm not going to be able to go into the monetization tab. So let's go on to the next step. You're going to save your changes. Oh, looks like I got to put in some stuff here. So once you've saved it, you're going to get directed back to what looks like the same screen. However, you're going to have all the, the, the server URLs that you're going to need to input into Wirecast, which is what we'll do first, and to, to make readily available. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get this set up here. 
as we move the screen over. So now you're seeing uh, what Wirecast looks like. And I'm using Wirecast to actually record this commentary. So now that you've got all these settings that are available for you, first one that's going to pop up is the 720. You're going to go to your broadcast, your broadcast settings, and just drag this one over as well. Um, you're going to start with the HD, so you need to select that uh, your encryption, your encoder preset, is set to flat, flash HD bandwidth 16 by 9. This is going to be your first one. You can edit this. We'll go into edit settings afterwards, but you're going to want to take that primary, this code right here on this line, and input that into your address bar. Then you're going to need to take your stream name and input that into the stream right here. Now these codes change every single time you live stream. So you need to do this process every time you start a new stream. And if we move on to the 360 option, if I could just move this out of the way, uh, your 361 is a little bit different. It's selected as the encoder preset as flash high bandwidth 16 by 9 not HD, but still high. And you're going to want to do the same thing, copy and paste for both the stream name and the primary server URL into the settings. Now, ideal settings varies on a couple different things. Um, your, obviously, your computer power is going to have to uh, it's going to limit you on how many HD streams you're going to be able to put out at once so when YouTube offers the 1080p and 720 it might be taxing to your CPU uh, it's all depending on your personal equipment but from here what you can do is uh, we'll start with the 360 stream you can go into edit your stream settings now when I stream 360 this is kind of ideally what I want to stick to and you guys can copy these settings use them and it produces a pretty crisp and lag free stream. I haven't had any issues, any bad feedback about using any of this right here. Where it kind of gets a little tricky is when you're doing the, the HD stream. Now the 7000 bit rate, ignore that. That's for what I'm recording right now. I'm using this as well to record the commentary and the video. So ideally your average bit rate should be about 2800 to 3200 and a little bit higher than that will get you into buffering issues and lag issues so you want to stay around this setting you're still going to keep to the same uh the rest of the stuff 1280 by 720 29.97 and this should offer you guys you know really good stream options so you know it's pretty straightforward um what you can kind of do here and if you guys have any questions about wirecast settings you know feel free to send me a message and all of that good stuff. So I can add myself back here and woo, appear like Jesus. And let's go ahead and bring up XSplit. So if XSplit is your primary stream program, I assume you're screen capping from an HD PVR source. So I'm not gonna go through how to set up all that stuff as it should be something you've already familiar familiarized yourself with. But to start things off, we're going to start, you know, the same way we did with Wirecast. Go up into our broadcast settings, and I've already got a couple selected that I've used before, so we're going to ignore those, and we'll just start fresh. And we're going to go to Edit Channels. And as, as you see, I've already got all these selected and set up already. But we're going to go to Add a New Channel, and it's going to be a custom RTMP. Now from here, you're going to want to input your own custom name. So if we're going to start with the 360p stream, um, you can just go YouTube 360p and start from there. You're going to copy, just like we did on Wirecast, your primary server into the RTMP URL. And same with the stream name. Make sure it's correct. And remember, every time you stream, you have to take the new codes and the new uh, URLs that they give you and input them back into your stream program. And from here, uh, quality settings are a little bit different. As you see, it's got the video encoding process, and you're going to want to just use the XSplit default and select 9 or 10, either or. It, I, ever, I haven't really found a difference between them, so I'm just going to go select 10. And for 360, we're going to do 1530 like we did last time, and it should be the same for your VBV buffer. Now for audio, a lot of people are having issues with their audio with XSplit. It either um, gets a little bit behind the video so you want to stay to I like to stay right around 42 it's it's the highest you can go at a mono at 16-bit stereo and I think that's 
it's all you really need for live streaming audio you don't want to have like super blasting <laughs> stereo audio that people will kind of get frustrated with so um, now that we've got the 361 you just want to go ahead and repeat those same settings except using the same codes from the 720p stream now I don't primarily use XSplit as my main uh, stream program since I do rough roughly you know 90% of my streams are console and with console I use you know Wirecast it's a little bit easier for me and it picks up with the Blackmagic Intensity Pro a lot better than XSplit does right now. Um, if you haven't got either of these programs and you're still new to streaming altogether, I'll put the links in the description bar below of where you can get them and how to get them. Uh, XSplit is free right now while it's still beta and it's at a really good price if you want to pre-purchase the product before it comes out. Whereas Wirecast I think starts at $4.99. So, you do have some choices available and obviously uh, Wirecast is, in my opinion, the better of the products um, for console at least, uh, whereas XSplit is kind of the better for PC streaming. If you guys have any questions whatsoever um, regarding streaming or anything, you can go ahead and leave me a comment in the section below and I'll try to answer as many of your questions as problem or <laughs> as, you, as, you get, as you get problems. Uh, Fwiz right now is the best guy to follow for staying up to date with YouTube Live. So his at Twitter is at FWIZ and he's kind of in charge over at Machinima about bringing us new elements to YouTube Live and keeping us up to date on what's coming here in the future. Some promises that we've already had is that within a couple months YouTube Live streaming is going to blow away the competition. So it's best to get on board with the company that's going to take over. Obviously, you know, YouTube is the place to be. Why not utilize your YouTube subscriptions to watch your live stream content? Why don't you build up a VOD database uh, where people are going to constantly and you're going to constantly gain revenue uh, from your YouTube live streams? So thank you guys for tuning in today. I hope this was helpful and I hope you guys have learned a little thing or two. If not, well, thanks for checking out the video anyways. I'm Holiday Doc and I'm out.